I don't know if you guys have seen the promotional material for this legendary event. But yesterday, CancelCon went live. I'm not kidding, people. That's right. The CancelCon. No safe spaces. You have the right to remain silent. Featuring the very silenced people, Prager, Corolla, Ruben, and Shapiro. Uh, the, the, the very not able to publicly broadcast their opinions people. Cancel Culture and the Constitution. Live online event, September 17th, 8 p.m. ET. Uh, for those observant in the chat, that was yesterday. See, we've got the Statue of Liberty over here with duct tape over her mouth. See? Um, that was yesterday. You'll never guess how that turned out. Now, I haven't watched this, but here are some things that I notice. First of all, 41,000 views. That's about how many views this live stream VOD is going to have after uh, I end it in four hours. So, oof. To those of you who are wondering about the ratio, I think that's because Fuentes' uh, fans got here. If we take a look at the chat replay, am I going to have to reload the page? 1046, that's where we're at. Yeah, there we go. Nick Fuentes, Groiper, uh, Groiper, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, they got here first. Uh, truly, they have been canceled, but please, God, please, okay? I pray to the, to the highest powers in this world, to all the gods above and below, that what is about to happen is not copyrighted. Because the only thing that I have seen of this video is the first minute after it starts. And I, I, I need this to be in my video. Justice warrior. Yeah. It's the biased response to Yep. If you've been offended, your feelings yep. must be defended. It's real. Here comes Angela Frey. He's always ready to fascism with fascism. Starbucks windows don't stand a chance. Ethic can answer He's a systematic racism finder. Yeah, that's how it opened. They actually paid money to commission that animation for their video. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. No, that wasn't a collective hallucination. I'm not kidding. This was real life adults. Real life adults. Um. Came together to make that a reality. Um. Yeah, I, yeah, if I just shut down my channel right now, I feel like this would be a, a high note to end on. Uh, but yeah, uh, that is real. So, um, first of all, I, everyone Fs in chat to people who, whose brain died in 2015 and never moved on. Uh, uh, to a significant portion of online conservatives, uh, everyone who went brain dead uh, uh, five years ago and just their cognitive state never advanced past that point. Um, you know, I recently saw somebody on Twitter, like a spec skeptic, whatever, call Shuan Head a class justice warrior, like in a derogatory sense, like, uh, Shu's just a class justice warrior. And there is nobody on earth I feel worse for than people who are literally incapable of understanding politics, except through the lens of like sargon videos or whatever the fuck they were watching five years ago you know like that like that's their entire fucking spectrum you know it's like trying to see the world through the fucking shittiest dirtiest uh 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 what do the pirates use a little little extending seeing rod what's the term that thing you know spyglass yeah 
You, you're just you're fucked you know but anyway please god i haven't seen any of the rest of this it's two hours let's just jump around and see how bad it got Do you guys think I should commission an opening like this to every stream where it shows like dramatic still images of my face like like fucking flying around in a void while dramatic music plays it? All right, people of the internet. This is CancelCon. I'm Dave Rubin alongside Dennis Prager, Adam Carolla, and Ben Shapiro. You might have heard of these people, possibly. Maybe uh, what we're doing today is a live stream to talk about the No Safe Spaces movie, but more broadly, to talk about the thing that we're kind of all talking about all the time. Okay. And I don't mean just the four of us, I mean everybody really right. in the United States and all over the world. This, this crushing they blew the budget on the on move, free on the speech that you cartoon. guys see, not only in the college campus situation, but all over, in the corporate world, in academia, now in our political world. Okay, I'm gonna it, try to take this seriously. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What the fuck is Dave Rubin saying? Really, in the United States and all over the world, this, this crushing attack on free speech that what you guys see, attack? not only in the college campus situation, Where? but all over, in the corporate world, Where? in academia, now Where? in our political world, in the cultural sphere, Everywhere, everyone seems to be afraid to say what they think, and I found you're I think, all successful media demagogues. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? What are we? I so again, I I hate the cancel culture discourse because nobody knows what anyone else is fucking talking about. Nobody is that. What are we talking about right now? Are we talking about? So we're not talking about your First Amendment rights because nobody's First Amendment rights are being infringed upon. Are we talking about like TOS violations on Twitter? Like that's what cancel con is for? All of you have Twitter accounts. What what platforms have you been banned from? Yeah, it's it's never anything specific. It's just remember when Milo Yiannopoulos got protested against three years ago? Let's just keep that energy going forever. The last three guys who aren't afraid to say what they think. I'm not Gentlemen, afraid. Say something controversial right up top. Dennis, what's the most controversial thing that one can say? These 100% chance one of them are going to say men are men, women are women. Guaranteed. These days. <laughs> the most controversial thing, I'll tell you, America. Oh, I believe in hard work. What, what are these very, what are these very cancelable opinions they're going to throw out? I believe America is the greatest country. That very cancelable opinion that people in the United States of America fucking office of the president believe is a great country. I love America. Those are two of the most controversial things one can say. Brave! That, that's how Lincoln was a great man. In other words, any obvious moral statement regarding the U.S. is controversial. But that's brave! That's, that's so brave. Things are. are you telling me that America was not founded on racism not and so bigotry so and evil? Going harder, you know, Dave! I, I wonder... Do I look at you or the camera? Get all I, the shots. Look, look at, you. at me. Just, look I'm at me just, for a second, know, okay. for God's sake. <laughs> so, the uh, I always wonder of the many millions of slaves who came from Africa to the, to the, oh, to no. the Western Hemisphere, right? How North many of South them are America, better off? Three percent. Three percent came to the United States. About three hundred forty thousand versus, let's say, twelve million to Brazil. What are are they? undergoing the self-revolution in Brazil. You, don't, you, don't you wonder, why doesn't the left hate Brazil? Wait, we got... What? 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 Wait, first of all, black and indigenous people have been fighting for their rights in Latin America for, the, for, for literally hundreds of years. So, so yes, second of all, Brazil is currently run by Bolsonaro, so yeah, fuck Brazil. What? What are we talking about? Wait, do you think that lefties are going to fucking go? Do you think lefties in Brazil, like Brazilian leftists are like, oh, yeah, dude, we're totally 100 percent on board with the foundations of our country. What the fuck are you again? Remember, folks, never an argument, vague gesture 
and imagined hypocrisy. Vague gesture and imagined hypocrisy. They will never make an argument. We have four of the largest conservative demagogues here together sitting on fucking director's chair in a garage, and they will never make an argument. They can't do it. Their arguments are indefensible. They rely on the perceived and very real stupidity of their audience to get across their point. 3% of the Africans who came here, plus in the last 30 years, 3 million Africans, 3 million blacks have come here, 1 million from the Caribbean, 2 million from Africa, because they know how good it is for a black to live here. So a black. Holy shit, dude. I, ah, I can't pull. Okay. What, what does this have to do with slavery? So, like, that means slavery is okay? We, we, you have to live in, in a world of lies to accept this depiction of America. What Adam, depi Wait, does he think that... Wait, 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 hold on. So the claim he was trying to dispute there was the idea that America was founded in racism. Does he think black people were willfully immigrating to America back in 1776 when America was founded? Does he believe that? Like, oh, well, Amer blacks know, the blacks know how good blacks have it in America, so obviously the country couldn't have been founded on racism. Do you think they were coming here of their own volition back 250 years ago? Like, uh, like there were a bunch of black people who got shipped off to Brazil and they were like, I, I, I dream of journeying to the land of opportunity in America where I will also be a slave. What the fuck are you talking about? He said that America's good. That was the short version. Can you possibly so come up with something more uh, controversial so than that? I mean, come on, man. Well, what no one really wants to hear is you'll either do well here or you won't do well here, Whoa. and that'll be up to you. Wow. The playing field is fairly level, ha! certainly level enough in almost 2021. And it'll never- Remember, they fucking hate you if you're poor. It doesn't matter if you're conservative or progressive, okay? Being anti-woke isn't going to save you. If you're poor, these people despise you. It is a fact that there is not a meritocracy in America. It, it, it is a fact. This isn't disputable. This isn't like a weird analytical interpretation. It's a fact of the world that it is far more likely you will succeed if you're born in certain sets of situations than in other sets of situations. We know this. We know luck plays a huge factor. Everyone knows this. It's not up for debate. It's not a matter of opinion. They hate you if you're poor. If you're conservative and you're poor and you l watch this guy and you're like, oh yeah, dude, that's totally right. I'm only poor because I'm a fucking idiot. No, listen, hey brother, they may hate you. I don't, okay? I know you've been working hard, okay? I know you've been working hard your whole life, all right? I know you've had it rough, okay? You know what? There are better choices you could have made. They could have made better choices too. You think these dumb fucks up here who can't even make a cogent argument have been making nothing but good financial and social decisions their entire life? Absolutely not. These people are fucking stupid, okay? These people are like 40 IQ, all right? I care about you, okay? Even if you're anti-woke or whatever, I'll still care about you. These people don't give a fuck about you be completely level it can't be completely level people that are short have a slight disadvantage people who are born uh to this type of family or missing a wait, father in the home wait, for instance. wait is it level or not but this is about as level a society as you can ever have we literally have objectively lower income mobility than european countries wait we, there, there are metric wait not only is that not true but there are other countries that exist today that have higher levels of, uh, of, of income mobility or of class mobility. And thus, it is up to you. Now, the people, people hate that story. Well, you know who hates that story? Children. Children hate that story. Like when you go, hey, if you're, if you're getting a bad grade, it's not because the teacher hates you. <laughs> Here's a list of every country rated by their global social mobility index. This would be an indication of how meritocratic uh, a country is because the ability for a poor person and a wealthy person to be equally likely to fall into the same social strata, uh, that would be an indication of a meritocracy. Denmark, Norway, Finland, Sweden, Iceland, Netherlands, Switzerland, Belgium, Austria, Luxembourg, Germany, France, Slovenia, Canada, Japan, Australia, Malta, Ireland, Czech Republic, Singapore, United Kingdom, New Zealand, Estonia, Portugal, South Korea, Lithuania. And in 27th place below Lithuania is the United States of America. Wealthiest country on earth. 
There are 26 better countries in this respect. And these countries still all fucking suck. It's because you're not working hard enough. But now we're dealing with adult children everywhere you look. And this is all it is. It's basically taking adolescence and dragging it up into adulthood. And sadly, what? You know, I talk to people in their 70s who feel this way. My, my parents are in their 80s, I think they. I talk to people in their 70s who are aware of basic objective reality. I, why, why, why can't everyone just buy the, the dogma? Feel this way. So, unfortunately, everyone, if you live in this country and you live here during the present time, the onus is on you. If you're not having success, you got to go find a mirror. So are you saying just because you want something, you can't necessarily have it? Because right Yeah, it's funny that he would call... Uh, yeah, Shu, you're right. It's funny he would call other people's ch uh, mindsets childlike when he's literally like, uh, dude, everything's fair. Just stop being poor. Dude, dude, just work harder. Like, yeah, these incredibly adult mindsets, these very mature, very informed by data perspectives that this guy holds. Right now, we are in your garage. You've got some pretty sweet cars around here. I mean... I assume that Dennis and Ben and I each can take a car. You're fucking kidding me. You're fucking kidding me right now. They seriously kept the cars in the background just as a flex? Seriously? All right. Well, most of them have to go back to the prop house before we wrap tonight. Uh, Yes, uh, all these cars are, are things that I've always wanted. I, I enjoy them now. I loved cars when I was young. I never had any money, so I could never afford to own a car that was nice. As a matter of fact, I work construction, so I was forced to drive a pickup truck, which is really the opposite of one of these cars. So for me, I thought to myself, well, I like these cars. I'm driving a pickup truck. I got to focus, work harder, get better at what I do. And then one day I can have one of these sports cars. All right, Shapiro. That's great, dude. I just can't imagine how cucked you would have to be. Like, you're, you, like you, if the, the metaphorical wife that is your dreams has been just gaped by these fucking people. If you watch this shit and you're a fucking poor person, you're a poor conservative, and you're thinking like, oh yeah, you're right. I'm 55, I'm getting a little up there. Probably not gonna get that dream car now. <sighs> I must have fucked up somewhere. That's on me. And you're watching this and you're like, yeah, okay. Like this is propaganda designed to make you feel bad in a system that is skewed against you, you know? Like I'm not affected by that. To me, this just looks ridiculous because I never bought this horrible cucked fantasy that we all live in a fair world. This, this childlike fairy tale reality these people live in or pretend to live in for the purpose of pushing their propaganda. Um, where we all have, you know, our shots on an equal playing field. When I see this, I feel the natural, logical, emotional response, which is seething contempt. Not for them being wealthy, mind you, but for them despising poor people uh, uh, to, to the defiance of all available data and logic. We got Prager saying America's pretty good. We got Corolla saying that hard work has value. Uh, Can you beat either one of those? Come uh, on. Easily. Are you ready for this? <laughs> this is so easy. Okay. Men Get it. are not women. Oh, I wow. fucking knew it. Okay. I knew it. You asked for it. Cut. You asked for it. I mean, I J.K. Rowling's having her books They're so predictable. The only book any of these people have ever read, right? They, they should have read, like, the Bible or any other book. As it turns out, it turns out the only people. The Bible. That's it. That's the problem with trans people. They haven't read the Bible. Ben, you're Jewish. What the fuck do you mean the Bible? Why didn't you? I, one thing that I love is that Ben is Jewish, but he knows that he's a simp for fundamentalist institutions. So he never actually pushes like his Jewishness that hard. He always just comes off kind of like as a generic uh, a, a fundamentalist, you know? Um, but when it comes to actually talking about religion, he'll, he'll defend Christianity pretty, um, you know, like pretty upfront. Who's, they, they only read Harry Potter, and now they are burning the only book they have ever read because she had the temerity to say that biological sex exists. No, but I, I, it's the same. It's been years. And it's the, how do people think Ben Shapiro is smart? He would have come up with new talking points by now. How do people... It's the same shit. Nobody says sex doesn't exist. Nobody says men are women. Because if a man identifies as a woman, they would stop being a man. So they're not a... It's like... 
this this is how simple, this is how childlike, how smooth their minds are. Paint open. There we go. Okay, guys, can can things that are green be blue? Ans answer like a child would. Okay, don't don't try to be fancy. Is this blue? No, it's not. Green can't be blue. It's two different colors. But if you apply a process of identification... Holy shit! How... How did... It, it was green! But then it... Wait, how did that... Wait, hold on. I'm gonna, uh, uh, control Z, control Y. Okay. <sighs> okay, maybe that was a mistake. I didn't, no! It's still blue! How did it, how does it know? Oh, my only position is that color is real. My, my only position is color is real. Trans people hate me for this one, okay? Color exists. I don't know what that, what relationship that has to anything else we're talking about. But, it is true. Yeah, th th this is part of a broader kind of rubric that words have meaning and uh, objective reality exists outside of what you wish existed. Uh, that, you know, I, uh, your, your own personal feelings about things actually do not magically take the form of the rest of the world. It's the same talking points. This isn't edgy. This isn't cancel culture. It's been the same fucking buzzwords for five years nothing has changed this i can't believe they're pushing this as like some podcast for like edgy oft canceled uh, 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 uh brave provocateurs uh america is good hard work matters Just biological sex exists wow dude Get me on this panel. I've got some way hotter takes that I'm gonna share with you guys. Are you, oh, get me up there. Get me a fucking microphone. You wanna see opinions that'll get you canceled, okay? Get me a fucking syndicated uh, radio show, all right? You people are fucking weak. World yeah. and, uh, and acknowledging that objective reality exists is a tough one. I mean, and that, this does go to, you know, everything that we're talking about, right? This encompasses, you know, the, the fact that America is not systemically racist. This encompasses the fact wow. that if you fail in a free country, it's probably your own fault. Not always, but very often it is your own fault if you fail in a free country or you made some bad decisions. Uh, and, and it encompasses the fact that your neighbor is probably not a garbage person. I, I was talking the other day about the huh. fact that in L.A., the only thing that anybody seems to care about is planting these stupid ass lawn signs that say all of these dumb tautological slogans that mean nothing like what they Dude, actually- Dude, he's triggered. You can't, uh, the reason I left the line, well, let's say hypothetically you're Ben Shapiro in early 2020 and you live in Los Angeles and you go outside and you see there are multiple, I say multiple lawn signs that have been planted firmly into the dirt and through the grass of my neighbor's lawns. And they say just worthless tautological garbage like black lives matter. Um, and like trans women are women. Just these 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 worthless uh, virtue signaling uh, uh, iconographic attempts at uh, 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 propagandizing their disgusting anti-Western civilization message. Uh, anyone could see those signs. Children could walk by and see those signs. Uh, and that is why I moved to, what did he move to? Nashville? What, did he move to Texas? Where, where did Ben Shapiro recently move to? He recently posted some embarrassing picture of him in a fucking cowboy hat leaning on a pickup truck they're supposed to mean right the and, future is female and also believe in science right exactly yeah. but, but True. Yeah, black lives matter which wait wait, wait 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 believe in science is that like are they offended by that uh, by the way i've never in my life never in my life seen a the future is female sign not once i've been to a lot of cities that get called progressive i've been all around the place i have never once seen any sign that says that Oh yeah, here we go. Dude, this is phenomenal. I love this because this is like, this is such a fucking stereotype, dude. First of all, he is getting mogged by this pickup truck. Holy shit, he is getting fucking dominated by it, okay? I, that, that pickup truck uh, fucked his wife 
uh, better than he ever could. Uh, second of all, uh, this is a stereotype uh, so sublimely realized that it is um, that that it is almost offensive. This is an out of towner who comes in to the South wearing a gigantic cowboy hat and a pickup truck that they probably got from a fucking rental place to do their blogging job to to go podcasting. How, 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 hello, howdy, my fellow Southern, my, my fellow Southern gentlemen. Hello, uh, a tip of the gallon to you, my friends. Uh, I'm got, oh, sorry, I would love to uh, join you at your barbecue, but I have to, um, <laughs> I have to respond to some YouTube comments and then go do some pre-recordings for my upcoming show, Cancelled, uh, which is where I, I sit in a garage with other multimillionaires talking about how nobody lets us say anything even though we're some of the most viewed and publicly visible figures in America. Just get me out of here. Which, again, is inarguable in one context, but that's not what they mean by Black Lives Matter. Uh, or Water is Life, which I, I was not confused as to why that was controversial. Uh, and, uh, and Wait, 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 wait. What? Water is life? Why are you... It, I mean, it is. Are you having trouble accepting reality? What, what, I don't even know why he's mentioning this. You know, women's health, women's rights, are our, our human rights, and all this kind of stuff. The implication of that entire sign is that the person who lives next to you is a bad person, yeah. right? You're a good person, the person what? who lives next to you is a bad person. And it's sort of like this pagan Passover routine. What? Instead of like painting the blood on your lintel, you take one of these Black Lives Matter signs and you plunk it in your front lawn. What? And then the social justice warriors pass over your house and move on to the next house to burn it. And then First of all, unironically using the term social justice warriors, all, the full SJW, not even just saying SJW, but full social justice warrior in 2020 is unbelievably embarrassing. Uh, second of all, what the fuck do you mean? If people plant signs in their lawn, they're just signaling their political values. You would never say this about Trump 2020, would you? You would never say this. Not once. You would never say, oh, when people put Trump 2020 signs on their lawn, they're basically just saying the people around them are bad people because they're virtue signaling their political positions. You would never say it. You are such a fucking hack, dude. Holy shit. I can't believe people hold Ben Shapiro up as some sort of mantle of intellectual honesty in the modern era, dude. This guy is as dishonest and as um, uh, repu reputable uh, as any fucking um, uh, degenerate YouTube uh, conservative uh, who um, uh, who's just scraping by trying to like squabble debates with um, with other YouTubers now. You know, he like he's here with me. OK. He's down here with me, but instead of being down here with me, where he should be, he's being treated like some sort of intellectual mogul. I don't, like, I, I just, I wish we could live in a world where Ben Shapiro has a business card that it costs $4 per card to print, and it just says YouTuber, and that's all he has. But instead, we have to deal with this. This is the world we live in, okay? Was he wearing a yarmulke under the cowboy hat? Um, it was either under it or over it. Game of social justice. Uh, and uh, the fact is that in objective reality, your neighbor is probably not a bad person. What does that mean? They're probably just as nice a person as you. They're probably a nicer person than you are because they probably don't think that you're a bad person. What, what does that mean? Uh, and, uh, and so, you know, objective reality doesn't always what, meet what with What is your... this objective? He's so insecure. Do you think he's trying to um, adopt Jordan Peterson's, like, niche? This subjective reality thing, he, he, uh, he, the way he's talking right now, I feel like he's trying to ape a little bit of this, uh, a, a little bit of the, you know, the, the lost territory. What, how insecure do you have to be to see your neighbor put up a sign that says Black Lives Matter and think they're throwing shade at you? Approval. So one other thing before we jump to the sponsors, do you guys think it's odd that we're thought of as controversial? I, I find it very Nobody odd so many oh, people- Oh, you are cracking me up. Do you know just today, <laughs> This is weird to hear your thoughts played back to you. Just today I was thinking I'd like to write a column, I write a column every week, that I'd like to write a column. This is what I believe. Why am I called a right winger? That's We're all gonna do we're all gonna do the, the, the Tim Pool thing. It's gonna you're gonna have dude, I can't wait for uh, Tucker Carlson to say well, I'm not really a conservative. I'm more of a, um, I'd say I'm more of a classical liberal. Like you could do this with anyone, dude. Holy shit. Uh.
That would be the, that was what I was thinking the entire column because I thought, you know, I grew up. It's redundant. As a Jew in New York who went to Columbia, by definition, you're a liberal. Yeah. I mean, it's redundant yeah, yeah. No, to say that, you're a no. liberal. The entire sentence was actually I'm just sorry. redundant. <laughs> yeah. A Jew in New York went to Columbia. The rest of the... Uh, so that's that's yeah, like, correct. You should have done redundant. it. Redundant. redundant. This, this is id poll. This is unironic identity politics that they're jerking themselves off over right now. Right, right exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I realize everything that I believed when I was a liberal and a Democrat, I still believe. I know you have this totally. Yeah, I hear you. It's this, ah, uh, ah, I never left the left, the left left me. So again, uh, 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 PragerU has made videos on 1350. He has made videos on how uh, wives should ha uh, shouldn't be that mad at their husbands when their husbands cheat on them. I'm pretty sure, hasn't PragerU literally made a video arguing against the concept of marital rape? Like, this dude, is, this dude isn't just a regular conservative. This guy would be like a fucking cult leader who, want, who like, systemically rapes the daughters of the people uh, who, um, uh, who, are, who are part of his coven. If, it, if he weren't a... Uh, if, if he weren't like a public figure in the way that he is. Yeah. I mean, he basically is a cult leader. Like this dude is so, yeah, he did a, he literally did a video rejecting the enlightenment. I'm not kidding about that. Hold on, wait, hold on. Prager you enlightenment. This video, what was the enlightenment? Was, was, was about, I'm not kidding. It was about how actually the most influential thinkers of the Enlightenments were the conservatives, how it was piousness, devotion to God, respect uh, for, for religion and for the king uh, that were actually the defining uh, ideological tendencies of the Enlightenment, and that other tendencies like uh, uh, freedom and democracy were actually like rooted in, um, in uh, well, he doesn't say degeneracy, but yeah, the, like, like you... This isn't just regular conservatism. Regular conservatives still fundamentally subscribe to the principles of the Enlightenment. This isn't regular conservatism. This is advanced conservatism, okay? Like, when you're going as far as rejecting the tenets of the Enlightenment, you can't ever make like, claim to this like, oh, well, the left left me. Oh, here we go. When a woman isn't in the mood, part two. Here we go. In part one, I made the argument any woman who is married to a good man and who wants a happy marriage ought to consent to at least some form of sexual relations as much as possible. In part two, I advanced the argument that a wife should do so even when she is not in the mood for sexual relations. Like, the, I, I, this from this from. Dennis Prager, like I can't, I can't satirize this. I'm not, I'm not kidding. You think he wrote these just to show them to his wife? Like, like he, he was like, he, he, hello, um, could, could we do intercourse? And she was like, no. And then he ran back and, <sighs> <sighs> well, I just found this article. Um, seems pretty compelling. Maybe you could take a look. And um, it says you should fuck me, actually. Uh, okay, well, I really don't want to. <sighs> well, I found a second article. <laughs> you, you can read it if you want. I'm not going over all of it. And it's every one of those beliefs is now called right wing. <laughs> What beliefs? I, I didn't change. I'm sorry. What beliefs? Wait, wait, wait. You were a Democrat and a liberal, and now all the beliefs you held are called right wing. What beliefs, Dennis Prager? So far, we haven't been specific with essentially any claims we've made. You want to you wanna open up the... Want to open up the gates? Maybe let, let us know what positions used to be liberal that are now conservative? I didn't. The, the, the liberals have accepted the left lie that conservatism is their enemy when leftism is the enemy of liberalism. Nice, nice. Yeah. Corolla? Oh, wait, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's Dennis Prager saying that he would be raping people if it weren't for the Bible. Or, or sorry, the rule of law. Uh, uh, if there were no moral rules and no police, men would grab women and do what they wanted as a rule. That is the way men are made. 
the fact that your man doesn't act that way is because he has been given a set of rules and because he knows that he will be punished or just enough that he has these set of rules and the fear of punishment is not even necessary. But rules, men know this, and, and we, we, we males, I, I am one of them, I am male. We know this from a very early age. We can't act out our sexual nature. It's, it's, it's made clear to, to boys in, in the vast majority of instances at a very early age, and it is a good thing that it, that it is done. Uncontrolled male sexual nature is frightening. I know um, I know some of the ladies in chat might feel an overwhelming temptation to submit to the sexual Tyrannosaurus that is Dennis Prager, but I encourage you not to, uh, because um, you will not be able to stop once he gets started. Um, yeah, does anyone else think it's funny that a bunch of people who watched this video of Dennis Prager, who liked this video, probably thought that feminists were like misandrist anti-male pieces of shit for saying that men are inherently inclined towards violence? Does anyone else think there's like a really weird disconnect here? Like there were a bunch of guys who got radicalized into anti-feminism because they thought that feminism was saying men are inherently violent. And now Dennis Prager, a, a millionaire, is sitting here talking about how, yeah, it's just biological. Like we would be raping everyone if it weren't for the threat of prison. We would be raping everyone. I would rape you. Um... You know, I'm honestly surprised he hasn't had another version of this video um, where it's where it's for kids, you know, um, where he's like male sexual nature likes 14 year old girls. That's just how it is. In fact, I would be willing to bet the fact that he can't make that video is why he bitches about cancel culture. Does anyone else get that feeling right there? Because he hasn't ever been censored in any respect, but he knows in his head, he's like, that's the video, that's the truth they don't want me to tell. So now he's a cancel con, you know? Yeah, when they're most fertile. Just some wild incel shit, you know? When you were doing the man show and, and comedy and all that stuff, did you ever think of yourself as controversial? By the way, nobody thinks of these people as controversial. They tow the conservative line incredibly well. I just want to be perfectly clear. Controversial doesn't mean you're on one side of the political aisle. Controversial means you antagonize both sides. I am controversial. People on the left and the right fucking hate me. I haven't. I am. I have earned that term with my uh, with my uh, top level SSS performance uh, at being a YouTuber. Okay, but this, you guys, you guys are Republican demagogues. You are uncritically accepted by conservatives, and you are disliked by non-conservatives. That's, that's not controversial. You've just taken a political side. No, I've, I've always just had opinions, and I believe them to be true. And, you know, I formed a lot of my opinions because I did a show called Love Line, uh, a syndicated radio show and a TV show, and I spoke every night to screwed up teenagers around the country. And you Which is also redundant. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> teenagers around the country. But yeah. I would, for every night for a decade, I would just hear mm. the problems of 15 year olds and sort of where they came from. And it was always like, I could tell when the dad wasn't there. I could tell when there was this issue or that issue. At a certain point, you can hear it in their voice. The thing this that is the most boomer shit I've ever watched. Is this really the energy of cancel con? You know? Why didn't they get Milo Yiannopoulos, by the way? Milo Yiannopoulos has actually been canceled for being pro-child rape. You know? I mean, that is something that you will get canceled for, it seems. Uh, wh where's the energy at, you know? Uh, D uh, Dave Rubin uh, has the IQ of a houseplant. Um, Dennis Prager is just thinking about uh, his next uh, coerced, extorted sex session with his wife. Uh, Adam Carolla has the mental age of Joe Biden. And Ben Shapiro seems to be hiding his power. I don't know why Ben Shapiro is being so quiet in the corner. I guess maybe he's just a naturally submissive person. You you'd think that he's you you you'd think that he'd really be busting it out. Uh, because he's kind of like the top name here, but he's just, he's just sitting there. Maybe he's like the, it's like the anime battle where you save the biggest, the baddest enemy for last. You know what I mean? 
where these these three are the grunts, and then at the end, Ben Shapiro comes in and he looks you directly in the eye, and he recites the opening uh, uh, section of the biology pa chapter of a fourth grade biology textbook, uh, written in 1982. As he tries not to cry. That's kind of interesting is you can physically hear the tone and almost diagnose what their problem is. And so I formed my opinions long ago just hearing all the screwed up teenagers, all the broken families, all the rebellion and all, 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 all the. All right, we're not watching the whole fucking thing. Move it on. Change every time, exactly. and you keep saying the cash register is broken, but how's it only broken in one direction? How are these mistakes? How are what? these administrative problems? Or somebody did? How come it just goes one direction? Well, I yeah. mean, th this actually, uh, I have a question actually. Yeah, take and that it is, and, and that is, how since there are a lot of college students watching, uh, <laughs> how? Have you guys ever seen the turnout for TPUSA meetings? I gotta say, listen guys, uh, uh, the, the effort, the efforts to mobilize a substantial student population for, uh, for, for the conservative, uh, wing, uh, have not been a tremendous success. This shit appeals to boomers. Why the fuck would college students ever watch any of the people here except for arguably Ben Shapiro, who does have some pull amongst young people. But what about, you think that like kids are gonna come out for Dennis Prager? Like that's what they're gonna come out for? Should college students deal with this? Because a lot of college students are in a position where if they speak freely, they get graded down. They what? are socially- Evidence? What do you mean speak freely? You mean if they're wrong? Wait, speak, what do you mean by that? I'd love to see evidence of that. But like by speak freely, they could mean like there was a test and I freely spoke the incorrect answer. I mean, in the, if that's the case, that would probably lead to a reduction of your grade. The ostracized. In some cases, they get kicked out of college. We're seeing this increasingly. I have Bullshit. Where the fuck is this happening? Because people speak free. So by speak freely, do we mean like call people the N word? Like what, 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 what is the threshold here? Harass LGBT people? Yeah, like uh, repeatedly dead name and throw milk at trans people? Like w what? What exactly? What's the... People. An answer. Okay. And I, I, as I did in, an interview, I sat in your office, by the way, today and did an interview. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed it. Speaking <laughs> of gaslighting, I did fart once. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, so, um, uh, anyway, yeah, I noticed that they're really, really averse to invoking any specific instances of, um, of cancel culture, in effect. It was the same with the Harper's letter, by the way. You remember the Harper's letter? I covered it on stream a couple weeks, maybe a month ago, where a bunch of people signed a letter saying cancel culture is going too far. That letter also didn't really have any specific examples. It just gestured vaguely at the idea of people being silenced for their speech. There is, by the way, a type of silencing that I am concerned with, and it's the type conservatives will never acknowledge exist. And it is the silencing that is being experienced right now in the media and in the White House. Because White House officials can't speak out on what the Trump administration is doing if it's negative. Because if they do, they get shit-canned or, um, uh, uh, or they get publicly denigrated. That could be the end of their career. Uh, additionally, in some cases now, especially since the White House has not been complying regularly with uh, Freedom of Information Act requests, there is some good reason to believe the government is unnecessarily censoring information which could be harmful to Trump. Not to America, but to Trump. And likewise, in the journalism world, there's a similar pressure being faced uh, by them, a soft pressure, a chilling effect. 
um, because Trump has repeatedly denigrated and made threats against the legitimacy of the media, um, uh, along with threatening to tighten up libel laws, lawsuits, and what have you. These are the types of free speech that I am concerned with. I am concerned with the ability for people to speak truth to power, for people to be able to unveil uh, 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 legitimate crimes taking place in the White House, for people to cover current events, for people to discover the truth. When I think of victims of cancel culture, I think of those people, not of aging conservative demagogues who have all made more money in their lifetimes than they will ever need sitting together in a garage collectively bitching about the experiences of students uh, who they cannot name any specifics over and seem to be uh, just vaguely gesturing at the idea of censorship of. This is, this is not what I imagine when I think cancel culture, okay? And lest I forget the greatest example of cancel culture in all of modern American history, my ban from Twitch. F's in chat, never forget. Remember that every single person sitting here, every last one of them, would have been 100% okay with McCarthyism. If these people had been around and active back when the government was actively uh, 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 putting wiretaps on left-leaning people, uh, throwing people out of their jobs, blacklisting people from industries, these people would have been 100% in favor of it. <laughs> I don't it's fine, I'm abandoning right. that office. I'm oh, leaving yeah, the state, yeah. as you know, so task, complete this task, have satisfaction and pride, and move on. What if your task was ending racism? Well, that's going to be <laughs> a treadmill <laughs> that you're going to run on for your, uh, uh, your entire adult life. Right. Or it is getting... Does that make a goal less valuable if you spend your entire life working on it? Like, what the fuck does that mean? Oh, dude, feeding the poor? You want to feed the poor? Dude, there's always more poor people. They need to keep eating. Like, you're going to be doing that forever. What the fuck are you talking about? Getting rid of gender inequities or whatever. If these were, if everything was, say, a goal and a task was a bridge too far, that everything was so broad that you're going to end systemic, fill in the blank, then your entire existence... What? is a, 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 a portrait in frustration, right? Because- Yeah, trying to make the world better can be frustrating. What the fuck are these arguments? They're like, uh, you wanna try to make the world better? Yeah, that's like really hard. Like, you don't wanna do that. What the fuck are you talking about? It's fun, this guy literally, his, his controversial opinion was that hard work matters, and now he's denigrating the idea of working hard to make the world better. Interesting. So this guy's okay with hard work when it comes to personal enrichment, but not okay with hard work when it comes to trying to end systemic racism. That's a very interesting dichotomy there. I wonder why. These people are evil, by the way. I don't usually like to use, like, heavily morally weighted language. All of these people are intelligent, with the possible exception of Dave Rubin, enough to know exactly what they're doing. They know what myths they're perpetuating. They know the lies and lines they're given by the billionaires who fund their projects. Um, yeah, Dave Rubin, they maybe just give, like, some candy before every podcast appearance, possibly. But for the rest of them, they know what they're doing. And, and what, what they're doing is they're trying to fuck over all of you. Um, this is an embarrassing circle jerk. I can't continue this anymore. I guarantee you that if I watched the entire thing on stream, off stream, doesn't matter, we would not see a single, uh, specific example of cancel culture invoked that was illegitimate. So they might bring up something that happened and it would be like a company fired them because they did a bad job and that's it, you know? I guarantee you the whole fucking video is going to be like that. I just scrolled through the buffering bar. Apparently they actually get the Zodiac Killer um, on at some point, which is incredible. Has anyone else, uh, have we all talked before about how much work Cruz's beard is doing? Because Ted Cruz's beard does a lot of work, you know? It pulls a lot of weight. And I respect it. I won't lie, I prefer the beard to the not beard, uh, in my opinion. I'm hard left. <laughs> if you're a... <laughs> nope, that's all we need to hear. It's true. I am the hard left. 
Uh, what an embarrassing circle jerk, dude. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, closing out, hot reminder. Um, <laughs> now I'm seeing it only has 42,000 views. Mark Dice, I'm 30 minutes in, I haven't heard anything but generic platitudes and self-aggrandizing. Did they actually mention the names of any people who have been censored or the specific reasons why they were banned from social media platforms? None of these guys have ever had a Facebook post taken down, a YouTube community guidelines strike, or even a 12-hour suspension from Twitter. What the fuck do they know about being canceled? Well, there you go, Mark Dice. You know, when the... When the, when the broken clock t time twice a day... There you go. There you go. Very nice. Wait! Hold on. Involve the end joke, believe it or not, I think I told you this once on, on your radio show, Adam. I used to do a joke that involved the N-word, and it wasn't to be racially offensive You're or, or in a pejorative way. I was doing an impression to make fun of people that use words like that. And for about five years, it would get a huge laugh. And then I remember one night, I was on stage at Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, and the crowd kind of, they all froze like all at the same time. And I remember in my head thinking, I'm never going to tell that joke again. And that's a, that's a pretty dangerous place for a comedian to be. It's Comedians not being able to say the N-word on stage without getting public backlash is a dangerous place. But that's an impressive level of social awareness from Dave Rubin, by the way, for him to see people reacting to physical stimulus around them and for him to be able to interpret from that some kind of lesson, you know? Um, that, that's, a, that's actually like a very impressive um, deviation from his typical cognitive abilities. But uh, yeah, there, I, there are so many things I want to say about this. First of all, a good comedian recognizes that tastes change with time and they try to move to adjust their material to suit those tastes. Any good professional will do that. No, like if you have a, the like the world's greatest like fucking tailor, okay, and they make really good clothing and styles change. It's 1989, and they keep making bell bottoms. It doesn't matter how talented they are. The fact that they're unwilling to move with the times is a, is a mark against their skill. They're no longer able to do their job as well as they used to. If you're a comedian and your jokes aren't landing anymore, tell better fucking jokes, you lazy piece of shit. Quit being such a snowflake. It's a dangerous place for anybody to be. Even The Guardian, which is on the left, said, this is ridiculous. We can't discuss a Huckleberry Finn. Yeah. Because you, you can't say words that, that are in there. I you absolutely can. In any classroom in America, you can read Huckleberry Finn. I have never, I have uh, talked to people about that. I have never heard a person say that during their class reading or whatever of Huckleberry Finn or whatever book like that, they couldn't say it, you know? In my classroom, they did. It, we were reading a text. If some other classroom says, eh, just say N-word instead of the actual N-word, okay, whatever. It doesn't change the fucking book. Asked on my show, why can you say kike? Kike is the, <laughs> is the N-word about Jews. And by the way, you should be allowed to say it, but not, obviously not to call a Jew that, but to, to say what the word is. Uh, no, no, it's, 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 this is all, uh, look at how holy I am. It has nothing to do with real morality. Very nice. Um, good ending frame, too. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Um, uh, Dennis Prager won't get canceled for that because the vast majority of Jews in America are progressive anyway, so they already hated him. So he doesn't need to worry about a big backlash, you know? It's the same as black conservatives, you know? You know the, the black conservative YouTuber? They'll be like, I don't care if you say it. They're not going to get a fucking backlash from their community. Because they know their community is full of white people who are just going to be like, yeah, dude, epic, based. Anyway, God, Godspeed, Godspeed to all of them.